What's up, everyone? Thanks for stopping by this special edition of Girls Who Bet. Aaron Dolan here from FanDuel with TVG reporter Christina Blacker to talk about the Breeders' Cup, which is coming up this Friday and Saturday. Christina, thanks for joining us, and we're ready to have our viewers get some insight from you. Thanks for having me, Aaron. I'm really excited to talk to you about the Breeders' Cup today. It's actually one of my favorite events in horse racing of the entire year. So exciting. So betting on horses may be new for some people, myself included. So for starters, how do you bet on horse racing? Like how is it different than the normal sports betting world? So the thing about betting on horses is that you're betting into a paramutual pool. So the odds change throughout the time from when it opens to when wagering actually closes. Wagering closes when the horses leave the gate. So you kind of have up until that last minute or so to make sure you get your bets in. But when wagering opens, you might be looking at a horse that say, 10 to 1 on the board and really like that horse and you get your bet in at 10 to 1. If a lot of other people come in and they want to wager on that horse as well, by the time we reach post time and by the time they leave the gate, a horse might be 5 to 1. Conversely, you might be one of the only people that likes that horse and your odds are going to go up. So you might end up with an even better price at post time than you initially thought. But the important thing is just to find a reason to like a particular horse, whether it's a specific distance, whether it's their physical makeup, whether it's a change in their surface that they're competing on or a change in the distance that you project will be successful for them. That's how you're going to find value and kind of the more you know and the more you study, the more money you can make. That's so interesting how you have to factor in so many different things and the odds can change so often. So where would you suggest bettors go to find value on the board or a specific time that you would like to bet on a horse? So the wonderful thing about the Breeders' Cup is this is basically like the Olympics of horse racing. So there are 14 Breeders' Cup races over the two days. These are the best horses from all over the world, and they have to qualify to get into these races. So you're talking about the upper echelon cream of the crop as far as equine athletes. And when you get them all together, there's certainly going to be some that are a little bit more fancy than others, but they're there because they earned their way in. So there might be a 10 to one shot, a 20 to one shot, a 30 to one shot. That horse would never be that kind of price on any other weekend. This weekend, you're going to get value on every single horse because this is when you bring all the best horses together. And the way that they separate out those 14 Breeders' Cup races is by a bunch of different categories. So two-year-olds will only compete against two-year-olds. We have on Friday what they call Future Stars Friday. All the young horses, the babies, compete on the Friday card. Then they will also divide races into different distances. Some horses want to run around one turn. Some are better around two turns. Some are better around three turns. So they'll separate the races that way as well. And then for many of the older horses, they will separate by gender also. So for the most part, you have the males against the males. The females are allowed to run in the male races if they want to, but not vice versa. You'll have some all-female races as well. So there's something for everyone. There's a distance and a surface for every horse, and that's just what makes the Breeders' Cup so exciting. I love that the female horses could potentially run with the male horses. I like that. I like that idea a lot. So what are your favorite picks for the Breeders' Cup? There's so many. So I want to tell you about one horse that I know is going to be really easy to remember, though. Her name is Going to Vegas. OK, so if she wins, there's going to be plenty of reason to celebrate and lots of people that I'm sure in her ownership group are probably going to hop on a plane from San Diego to Vegas because it's only an hour flight from where we are. She runs in a race called the Philly and Mare Turf. So it's a race for females. It's a race around three turns. What I love about her is that she is like the little engine that could. She's small but mighty. She's tiny, but she's feisty. She's such a firecracker. When she's out there, she pins her ears straight back and she reaches her neck as far as she can. She never wants to let a horse get past her. And she likes to lead actually every step of the way. So some horses prefer to kind of settle in and make one run down the stretch. Others kind of do the heavy lifting. And she's one of those from the get go, from the time they spring the gates, she wants to be on the lead and she looks and gives every other horse that side eye like you're not going by me. So going to Vegas wants to go gate to wire in the Philly and Mare Turf and she's actually a great price. She's 12 to 1 on the morning line. She would have been a horse that is even money in any other race on any other day. And I just love her. I will absolutely be betting on going to Vegas. Wow. I love that name. And going to Vegas, I don't think gets much better than that if she does win and people heading over to Vegas anyways. But thank you so much for your insight, Christina. Appreciate it. And betters, you can bet on the Breeders' Cup right now on the FanDuel Racing.